Hello there, this is Dr. Mintz. This is a 62-year-old female with dizziness, difficulty walking, and an MRI was obtained. This is an overview of the T1 sagittal images. You see an abnormality. Where is it? That's right, it's in the cerebellum. We can characterize that a little more in a few minutes. We'll look first here in this area. What is this structure right here? It's a cella terska containing what? The pituitary gland. And here is the pituitary infundibulum, which leads from the hypothalamus, the hypothalamus being located in the walls of the third ventricle, this being the third ventricle. The third ventricle itself empties through the cerebral aqueduct in the midbrain, and dorsal to the cerebral aqueduct is the quadrigeminal plate, which includes the superior colliculi, of which there are two, and the inferior colliculi, of which there are two. The inferior colliculi are obligate components of the auditory system. The superior colliculi are rudimentary structures of little value in the human. This area collectively is referred to as the midbrain. This is the pons right here, this oval structure, and the soft tissue dorsal to the oval structure itself is the pontine tegmentum. The pons is, a, is Latin for bridge because it bridges the fibers connecting the ipsilateral cerebellum with the contralateral cerebrum because the left hemisphere controls right side of the body movement and right side of the body sensation, whereas the right side of the cerebellum controls right side of the body movement or helps coordinate it, so-called. Okay, and here we have the corpus callosum. We have the rostrum right here, the genu or knee. Well, it's called genu but that means knee. We don't call it the knee of the, of the corpus callosum. Here's the body of the corpus callosum, and here is the splenium of the corpus callosum. Okay, this is actually a structure called the fornix. Okay, so here we are in the cerebellum, and we have this cystic structure with some soft tissue in its perimeter. We go to another sequence, T2-weighted images, and here you can see the high signal T2 weighted fluid attenu fluid signal with this mural nodule, this mass in the wall, mural nodule, typical of hemangioblastoma. Here you can see the eighth nerves going into the internal auditory canals bilaterally and connecting to the cochlea hearing apparatus and the labyrinth or the vestibular apparatus which coordinates balance and orientation in the three-dimensional physical world. Here if we see two vessels ventral to the medulla, those are the vertebral arteries, and they converge up more superiorly here to form the basilar artery this is just some venous structure with some flow void in it. Here's the pons and axial projection. Here's the fourth ventricle. And these are the areas of the trigeminal ganglia, right and left trigeminal ganglia. The trigeminal nerves emanate from the mid portion of the pons on both lateral aspects and I usually demonstrate that in the following manner.
my body is now the brain stem and I have a pot belly. Let's see if I can stick it out there. There we go. Pot belly pons. So the pons is like a pot belly of someone's body and what you have coming out from the right and left side of the pot belly pons are the trigeminal nerves. How can you remember that these are the trigeminal nerves? Well, trigeminal nerves are cranial nerve 5. 5, 5. Okay, so now you know that in the brain stem, oh boy, in the brain stem you have a pot belly pons and that coming off each side my arms are the trigeminal nerves, which is not just one cranial nerve or one on each side, but it's an important division because it means that you know already the first nerve is, is the olfactory, second nerve is the optic nerve, three and four are involved in eye movement control, and so is six, and they three and four are above the level of the pons. They come out above the level of the pons and six and seven and eight come out inferior to the level of the pons. So if you know, let me see if I'm getting my pot out there. Getting, if you can think of the pot belly pons as being the point from which five comes out. The trigeminal nerve comes out on both sides. And you know it's five because look, you've got five fingers, so this tells you it's five then one and two are obvious, three and four are ab above, superior to the level of these origins, and six, seven, and eight come off inferior to, the, to this level, and nine through twelve are down at the levels of, level of the medulla and the inferior brain stem. So it gives you an organization, uh, so in a manner of speaking, then, the trigeminal nerves and their origin from the lateral aspect of the pot belly pons is home plate for knowing where the trigeminal nerve arises. And the trigeminal nerve goes forward and it goes into a little cisternal space where cranial nerves 3, 4, and 6 also go and three, four, and six control eye movement. Okay, so here's the basilar artery then. Here we are in a little bit of cell of tersica there. We're going above that. You see that little dot there? That is the pituitary infundibulum. Here's the middle cerebral artery on each side. Here's the posterior cerebral artery on each side. And this is the region of the circle of Willis. So you have an A1 segment of an anterior cerebral artery going forward here. So that's anterior cerebral artery and it changes to A2 segment after it goes past the anterior communicating artery. And the basilar artery right here, if we go down, go back up, it gives rise to the P1 segment of the posterior cerebral artery on both sides. And this is the midbrain, and this is the interpeduncular cistern, and this is the cerebral aqueduct, which is in this location a portion of the midbrain. Here is the cerebellar vermis extending superiorly from the posterior fossa in which the cerebellum resides. And let's look at this lesion a little bit more. Okay, just another pulse sequence showing a mural nodule or mass in the cystic structure with moderate, mild to moderate surrounding edema. Here you have a nice view of the corpus callosum above the pituitary. The pituitary is in the cella tersica, and on both sides of the cella tersica are the cavernous sinuses one on this side, one on this side, and in this space, three, four, 
V1 and nerve 6 all course. 3, 4, and 6 make sense because they are oculomotor nerves that control eye movement. And V1 is the first division of the trigeminal nerve which goes to the forehead and the upper part of the face. Here you have the sylvian fissure which shows it's not just a fissure going in, it goes in and then goes up and down in that manner. And this will be the third ventricle, these are the two lateral ventricles. Let's see what else we've got on this hemangioblastoma, a very rare lesion. I'm fortunate to have one in my collection here. And we try all of our tricks diffusion weighted images and that didn't really doesn't really help us but we tend to shotgun a lot of these images just in case it helps because the patient's already in the scanner and why not quite frankly here's a lesion here now here's a diffusion weighted image very good for delineating areas of infarction but not so good at doing anything really useful for hemangioblastoma. Here is just a nice clean T1 weighted image without IV contrast showing the fine detail of the mass and the cystic component and showing that there is some mass effect partially compressing the fourth ventricle and maybe a little bit of the pons or at least the upper part of the fourth ventricle. There's a cerebral aqueduct, doesn't seem involved. Here's the cerebellar vermis poking superiorly through the tentorial incisura, and we're getting some signal related to the middle cerebral arteries here. Here you can see P1 segment going to the posterior cerebral arteries. I can see it. It's hard to see, but once you know what's there, that's the only thing that would be a linear structure going to the right and left. And here is A1 segment of the anterior cerebral artery, and then this is the continuation of the anterior cerebral artery beyond the anterior communicating artery. Here you have the optic chiasm, and just posterior to its convergence of the optic tracts, you have the pituitary infundibulum. So the chiasm has optic tracts, which are closer to the brain, and optic nerves, which we really don't see here, which go to the eyeballs. Optic nerve and optic tract are basically the same kind of tissue, but optic tract connotes more of a, a more central process, in meaning related to the brain, as opposed to nerves, which are more directly connected to peripheral structures, in this case, the eyeballs. Okay, let's see if we have our friend the uh, cingulate sulcus here. Yep. So here it is here and here. You go forward and to the left, this is central sulcus, I'm on the right rather, and you go forward and to the left, this is central sulcus on the left. Let's see what IV contrast does for this hemangioblastoma. It enhances the mural nodule, and it can be very intense enhancement. In this case, it is not. Here are the venous sinuses in the posterior fossa, and if we follow them back, we see that the sagittal sinus comes down and joins the two transverse sinuses and they in turn drain forward and inferior to give rise to the jugular veins at the skull base. And last sequence on this patient is a sagittal gadolinium enhanced and that is probably the nicest portrayal of this benign lesion but very potentially life-threatening because it's in the posterior it's in the posterior fossa and it's causing mass effect on the brain stem and since the posterior compartment has this roof over it, the tentorium, pressure can increase rather rapidly. 
Okay, that's it for now.